All right, so today we're going to talk about the question, what is knowledge? And to talk about this question, we're first going to talk about the question, what is belief? What are the different kinds of belief? So a note that a belief can be true if it corresponds to the world, false if it doesn't correspond to the world, justified if it's held on a good basis, and unjustified if it's not held on a good basis. So if you believe it will rain tomorrow, that belief is true if it does rain tomorrow and false if it doesn't rain tomorrow. Um, your belief that it will rain tomorrow is justified if you have a good reason or basis for holding it. So maybe you checked the weather app that you know is reliable, that would be a justified belief. But if you just kind of shake your magic eight ball and say, is it gonna to rain tomorrow? And your magic eight ball says yes, so you believe it. That's an unjustified belief because it's not held on a good basis. So what's interesting is we have these sort of two distinctions and they all four can actually map onto each other. So you can have a true belief that's justified. Um, so one plus one equals two would be a true belief that's justified. Or, you know, if you check your weather app, you believe it will rain tomorrow and it does rain tomorrow, that would be a justified true belief. Um, but you can also have true beliefs that aren't justified if you kind of have a lucky guess. So let's say you shake your magic eight ball and your magic eight ball says it will rain tomorrow, but kind of by luck, it actually does rain tomorrow. That would be a true belief, but it's not justified because you don't have a good basis for it. Um, with false beliefs, it's worth noting that those can actually be justified. So sometimes you have really good evidence for something, but it's actually misleading. So let's say your favorite sports team is doing really well this year and they're going to play a really bad team. Um, you might believe before the game they're going to win and that's a justified belief. You have a really good basis for it. Um, but let's say there's a total upset and even though your team was way better than the other team, they actually ended up losing. Then, then that would be a justified false belief. Um, you have a good basis for it, but your evidence actually ended up being misleading and the team lost. Finally, you can have unjustified false beliefs, like maybe a belief based on wishful thinking. So let's say um, the forecast predicts a 90% chance of rain tomorrow, but you have a picnic plan for tomorrow. So you just refuse to believe it's gonna rain tomorrow. Um, then it actually ends up raining tomorrow. So your belief that it's not gonna rain tomorrow would be both false because it does rain and unjustified. Okay. So those are sort of four different kinds of beliefs. Now, this brings us to uh, the JTB theory of knowledge. So JTB stands for justified true belief. And basically what this theory says is that knowledge sort of has three components or three ingredients, um, justification, truth, and belief. So here's an example. This analysis would say that you know that it's raining if, and only if, you believe that it's raining, your belief that it is raining is justified, and it's actually raining. So the thought is, well, you can't know something if you don't believe it. Um, you also need to have a good basis for that belief because knowledge can't just be a lucky guess. Um, but also, you can only have knowledge of something if it's true. You can't know something if it's false. So that thing you believe has to actually be true. So this is sort of the JTB theory of knowledge. And um, there's actually a very famous paper, one of the most famous papers in epistemology. It was written by Edmund Gettier, and it's called Is Justified True Belief Knowledge? And in this paper, Gettier argued that justified true belief doesn't always amount to knowledge. And I want to give you sort of two cases that are called Gettier cases. And these are cases of justified true belief without knowledge. And um, of course, since it's philosophy, this is still debatable. But I think most epistemologists think that Gettier showed in this paper that justified true belief isn't all you need for knowledge. So here's why. Um, this first case isn't actually one given by Gettier, but I think it's sort of a helpful warm-up case, and then we'll do a little bit more complicated case. That's one that Gettier gave himself. So <clears throat> let's say it's a Monday morning, and you come into your office, and um, you see the clock on the wall. This clock has always been reliable. You have no reason to think it's not reliable. It's worked for the many years you've worked at this job, and that clock says 9.03. So you believe it's 9.03, and it actually is 9.03. 
Um, but very uh, coincidentally, this clock actually stopped working over the weekend, so the clock is stopped. But the coincidence part is that it actually ended up being um, 9.03, so you kind of got lucky. Even though the clock was stopped, it actually still, uh, you still formed a true belief on the basis of um, seeing that clock. So you have justification to believe it's 903 because the clock's always been reliable in the past. So you have a good basis for that belief. The belief is also true because it happens to be stopped at the right time. But most people think it's not knowledge. There's this element of luck in the case. Um, you're, you're kind of getting, you can't get knowledge from something like a stopped clock. Um, so because of that element of luck, a lot of people think, well, this might be justified true belief, but it's not knowledge. Um, here's a second case, and this is a case that Gettier gives, but it's a little bit more complex. So Smith and Jones both applied for a job, and um, they're sort of in the waiting room, they've interviewed for this job, and they're waiting to sort of hear who got the job. And they're bored, so Smith uh, is playing around with stuff in his pocket, and he pulls all the coins out of his pocket, and he counts them, and he has 10 coins in his pocket, and Jones kind of sees him do this and notices that there's 10 coins in the pocket, in Smith's pocket. Then the person who interviewed them both came out, comes out and says, Smith, you did such a great job, awesome interview, uh, and then kind of leaves. So Joan leaves the waiting room very discouraged because he's thinking, well, Smith got the job. And then, you know, Smith counted those 10 coins in his pocket. So he believes the person who got the job has 10 coins in his pocket. But by sort of a twist of fate, um, they actually don't end up hiring Smith for the job. They end up hiring Jones. Um, but by another twist of fate, Jones actually also has 10 coins in his pocket. So Jones's belief that the person who has 10 coins in their pocket is going to get the job, that's actually both true and justified. But again, a lot of people think that's not knowledge because, um, again, there's that element of luck. So. These are sort of two cases of justified true belief without knowledge. And what's really interesting is that um, another philosopher, Linda Zagzebski, actually has a paper where she says, take a case of justified true belief. Then take that belief and add some bad luck so that belief ends up being false. You know, um, you know maybe the, the clock stops, right? but then add some good luck. So then that belief actually ends up being true. So you happen to walk in at the exact moment that the clock, uh, that the clock stopped at. So if you take kind of add the bad luck and then add the good luck, you can actually take many, many, many cases of justified true belief and make them ones where we think that the people in those cases don't actually know. So because of this, I think a lot of people think Gettier showed justified true belief um, isn't knowledge. Oops. Okay, so now you might wonder, well, if, guess, if justified true belief isn't knowledge, how should we define knowledge? Um, and it's actually very hard to say. So we won't go through them in this video, but I can link to some videos that talk about some of the different theories that have been proposed. And almost all of them are now considered to be failures. Um, they have counterexamples. They can't actually capture certain cases of knowledge. They're problematic for a variety of reasons. So what's kind of funny is actually now some epistemologists just define knowledge as justified, true, ungettiered belief. And they don't really say what exactly ungettiered means, but it's sort of like when, um, you know, the square root of negative one was undefined in math. And so we just started to call that I. So they kind of do that same thing with Gettier cases. Instead of telling us what on Gettier it is, they just sort of give it a label. Um, so it's kind of, but it is kind of this open question, like can we give a story or an explanation of what it means for a belief to be on Gettiered that will sort of capture all the cases of knowledge, but exclude all the cases of not, that aren't knowledge. So because of this problem, because of this trouble with defining knowledge after Gettier, some have actually suggested that we're actually just going about this whole thing the wrong way. And this is called knowledge first epistemology. So, so far what we've done is we've sort of started with belief. Remember the first slide, we said, what are the kinds of belief? There's true belief, false belief, justified belief, unjustified belief. And then we sort of use belief plus some other things like truth and justification, maybe something else, to try to understand what knowledge is. So we're treating belief as more basic or more fundamental than knowledge and building up to knowledge with belief and other stuff. 
But a couple of philosophers, including Timothy Williamson, they've suggested that epistemology, instead of starting with belief, it should actually start with knowledge. Um, and then what we should do is we should define other concepts like belief in terms of knowledge rather than the other way around. And what's interesting is knowledge is one of the words that's actually common to almost every language. And um, we have a pretty good grasp of it. It's a very common word we use all the time. And so the thought is we should actually treat that as sort of the more fundamental thing um, and then understand other things in terms of it. Um, so why think this? <clears throat> well, one thought is that knowing is sort of this ideal. We want our beliefs to amount to knowledge. And in the same way that we understand a circle, um, this is a circle because it in some way resembles the ideal geometric figure. Maybe what we should do is define belief in terms of the ideal way of believing. That's knowing. So what is belief on this view? Well, Williamson says that belief is treating something like you, like you know it, or belief is something that looks like knowledge from the inside. Um, from your perspective, the things you believe you also know. Um, and it's also interesting because knowledge first epistemology can tell us what makes belief rational or what is ideal believing. And that's, that's knowing. Belief aims at knowing. So today we have covered the four types of beliefs, the justified true belief theory of knowledge, Gettier's challenge to the justified true belief theory, and then sort of this debate between knowledge first and belief first epistemology.